Anatomy of the AC Joint by Ryan Vega. The AC joint is a gliding joint within the shoulder. This joint is specific to primates and humans, allowing for the ability to raise the arm above the head. This joint functions as a pivot point, acting like a strut to help with movement of the scapula, resulting in a greater degree of arm rotation. Also, the AC joint allows for the transmission of force from the upper arm to the rest of the skeleton. Bones. The AC joint is a joint that is formed between the clavicle and the scapula. The acromion, a section of the scapula, is the binding site for the clavicle. These two bones fit together but are not stable on their own. Thus, other structures are needed to provide stability. Muscles. Two sets of muscles are important for the stabilization of this joint. The first set is the group of muscle fibers known as the trapezius muscle. The upper trapezius muscle fibers connects the lower base of the skull to the clavicle. The middle and lower trapezius muscle fibers connect the vertebrae in the spine to the scapula. The second muscle is a group of muscle fibers known as the deltoid. The anterior deltoid connects the clavicle to the humerus, while the posterior and lateral deltoid fibers connect the scapula to the humerus. These two muscles help stabilize the clavicle and the scapula, holding the proper joint formation. Ligaments Three ligaments also help stabilize the AC joint, the acromioclavicular ligament and the two coracoclavicular ligaments. The acromioclavicular ligament is the ligament that directly connects the acromion to the clavicle and covers the joint. The two coracoclavicular ligaments also provide stability by connecting the coracoid process, a part of the scapula, to the clavicle. Once again, directly connecting the scapula and the clavicle in the proper orientation. Mechanism of Injury by Jared Lee Woods By far, the most common injury to the AC joint is a separation. When you hear the term shoulder separation, it means the same thing. Note that it is not the shoulder itself that is separated, but the joint above it. There are six grades of AC joint separations. Since the nature of the injury's impact, contact sports see this injury most often. Six grades of se separation severity. Grade one. A grade one separation is a mild sprain to the AC joint. Common signs of injury are guarding, swelling, deformity, and limited range of motion. Symptoms of injury include pain inside the shoulder, an increase of pain when arm is lifted above the shoulder, either active or passive range of motion, and pain branches to localized parts of the body, such as down the arm and up through the collarbone. Here's an image of the grade one. Grade two. A grade 2 separation is a complete rupture of the AC ligament, while the cora covacular ligaments remain intact. Grade 2 is the highest grade that is non-surgical, usually. Many of the signs and symptoms are similar to grade 1, but are less subtle. Using common sense, the greater the pain, the more obvious a reaction of the patient. Below is an image of a type 2 grade separation. Grade 3. A grade 3 separation occurs when all surrounding ligaments of the AC joint are torn, including the AC ligament and the coracocovacular ligament. Often, grade 3 separations are very visually obvious due to deformity. EMS should be activated if a grade 3 or higher is suspected or confirmed.
Below is an image of a grade 3. Note the deformity. Grades 4 through 6. Once a shoulder separation reaches a grade 4, it is graded on its displacement. EMS should be activated immediately and surgery will be required, most often emergency surgery within hours of the injury. Next, I have a clip of my personal grade 2 separation against La Mirada. The injury occurred upon impact with the defender and a second time upon impact with the ground to recover the fumbled ball. Note that the hit did not look like any abnormal hit, but it damaged the shoulder nonetheless. This is an example of the guarding that was described earlier in the grade one separation. Note the immediately reaction to the shoulder, trying to hold it and unconsciously protect it. This is Frankie Vega's grade four separation. Surgery was required for the reparation. The following clip is a clip of Matt Stafford suffering a grade two AC joint separation on the final play of the game against the Cleveland Browns. Note the impact into the ground. And Matthew Stafford is down on the field and is not getting up. Yeah, get the f off me. Mosley just drilled him right underneath the arm. Stafford is going to have to come out of the game. Uh, he's got it. It's a shoulder problem. It's shoulder. Well, I'll go on the shoulder. Did you get your AC joint? Oh, no, I never done that. Hey, that's the time I can play, right? No, 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 no. no, no. Yeah, give me, get the, help me up. I can throw the ball if you need me to throw the ball. And I think he's going to come back in the game, Brandon. Is Stafford coming back in? I think Stafford will come back in the game. Hey, hey. Note that Matt Stafford had the grade 2 separation. You heard his trainer say it's an AC joint separation, and he didn't want him to go back in the game just to be safe. And Matt Stafford insisted on it. As you see, you can play with a grade 2 injury, but it's excruciatingly painful, and Matt Stafford sat out the next week. Rehabilitation by Frankie Vega. Following a period of icing and immobilization for grade 1 and 2 injuries, mobility exercises can be undertaken, but only once shoulder movement is pain-free, normally 7 to 14 days for grade 1 and 2. Grade 3 injuries are now more frequently being treated with conservative treatment rather than surgery. However, due to the extent of damage, it is highly recommended to see a sports injury specialist or doctor. Pendulum exercises. Gently swing the arm forwards, backwards, and sideways while lying on your front or bent over. Gradually increase the range of motion. This is repeated with the arms swinging from side to side as well. Aim to reach about 90 degrees of motion in any direction. Add a light weight for a slight stretch throughout the shoulder. You can choose to do separate sets forwards and backwards and side to side 30 seconds each direction for three sets. Wall slash door exercises. Place one forearm on a fixed point such as a door frame or corner of a wall and gently turn away from it to stretch the front of the shoulder. Hold the position for 10 to 20 seconds and repeat it three times. External rotation stretch. The patient lies on their back with the upper arm at 90 degrees to the body and the elbow bent so that the hands point to the ceiling. A partner or therapist rotates the arm at the shoulder so that the palm of the hand faces up as shown. 
Hold the position for 20 to 30 seconds. Rest and repeat three to five times. External rotation strengthening. Attach the band to something stable as shown, holding one end, with the upper arm fixed against the body and the elbow bent. Pull the band so that the hand and forearm move away from the body while keeping the elbow against your side. Perform three sets of ten repetitions with a minute rest between sets. If you don't have a TheraBand available, stand side onto a wall with your upper arm by your side and the elbow bent to 90 degrees. Place the back of the wrist against the wall and try to rotate the arm at the shoulder against the resistance of the wall so there is no movement. Start off applying a gentle pressure and gradually increase how hard you push. Hold for 10 seconds, rest for 3 to 5, and repeat up to 10 times. Internal Rotation Strengthening Attach the band to something stable as shown holding one end with the upper arm fixed against the body and elbow bent. Pull the band so that the hand and forearm move towards your stomach while keeping the elbow against your side. Perform three sets of 10 repetitions with a minute rest between sets. When using resistance bands, start using a long length. If it is too easy, you can shorten the band to provide more resistance. With the arm in the same position as the external rotation strengthening exercise, rotate your body to face the wall. Place the front of the wrist against the wall and try to rotate your arm towards you. This is the exact opposite movement of external rotation. With the same starting position, Pull your hand in towards your stomach again, keeping the elbow by your side. Abduction Again, standing sideways onto the wall, straighten the elbow, place the back of the wrist and hand against the wall. Try to push the wall away as if lifting the arm out to the side. Hold for 20 to 30 seconds for 3 sets. Lateral raise. Still using the resistance band, stand on one end of the band with the other end in your hand. Keeping the elbow straight, pull your hand up to the level with your shoulder, ensuring you maintain a good posture throughout. Perform three sets of ten repetitions. This can be performed just as easily with a small dumbbell. Stand facing the band and keeping the elbow straight. Lift the arm so it is level with your shoulder. Similar to the previous strengthening exercise, keep the arm straight and lift until shoulder height. Return to sport. Before returning to any type of sport following an AC joint injury, there should be a full pain-free range of motion. On return to contact sports, protection can be provided by padding the joint with a circular piece of padding with a hole cut in the middle which should be centered over the joint. This can be kept in place with bandaging or a shoulder support. Stretching mobility and strength exercises should be continued throughout the return to sport phase. Heat and stim should be used before play and ice should be used post-activity.